today's video I'm going to be going over something a little bit different, something that's going to um, be a very different uh, thing to use on your models, and that's going to be watercolor washes. Now, of course, the washes you buy from GW and, and uh, Vallejo and Army Painters, those are all acrylics. And if you've seen some, I've had some other videos, I'll put a link up here, that um, use, and a lot of other people use oil washes. Oil, using the oil-based paints with the thinner and everything to um, get a working time. Basically, when you use the acrylic washes, you put them on, and there's not much you can do with them once they're on there. They're, they're stuck on there. Uh, you can try and control the pulling at the bottom, but other than that, there's not much you can do with it. The people you have been using oil washes so that they can go back and use some thinner and clean off excess wash in areas where they don't really want it. Um, the downside to oil washes is they take a long time, as many as five days, to dry completely. <clears throat> but in here, by using a watercolor wash, we're going to get all the benefits of oil washes but not the drying time. They're going to dry just as fast or even faster than acrylic washes. Now it does have some downsides too. And that's basically the acrylic paints we use for these models are is porous. If you've ever seen the hair, hair, hairspray method, which is something I use quite a bit, um, if you put water on an acrylic paint, it, the water will soak through the paint and soften it up. So if you have hairspray underneath it, the hairspray that softens up, it'll actually soak through the paint, loosen the hairspray, and the paint will chip off. That's how you do chipping hairspray method. You can look it up. There are thousands of videos on the hairspray method. So when you're using uh, watercolor washes, you might want to varnish the model prior to do the wash, um, just for that reason. So I went out and bought these two washes, these two watercolors. Um, these are Academy brand. I bought them at Michael's for $5 a tube. This was their level two watercolors. Their um, level one watercolor, the hobby one, was actually more. It's like five twenty nine. These level twos were four ninety nine, and then the Windsor Newton level threes were ten dollars a tube. So you use these just like you would the oil, exactly like you would oil colors. So we need a palette here, and I don't know if you remember my failed watercolor brush video, but now we're actually going to use the water brushes. Uh, for their intended purpose, which is watercolor pigments. So we're going to put some water here in the handle, which isn't that easy because it's a nice vapor lock here. I'm not careful. Surface tension here on the top. I try and fill it up. I'm going to put some water in the water brush. And once again, remember it's stupid left hand threads. So, what this allows, I'm going to put some water here in the tray too, in the palette, just to be on the safe side. Okay. So, what the watercolor brush does is it actually puts water in the handle, and you push here where it says push, and it will actually flow the water through the brush. And that's how you control the amount of um, water on the pigment. The nice thing about watercolor pigments, this, I had this pigment on here for earlier when I was experimenting, and it's dried, but I can just put some more water in it, and it just softens right back up again. Okay. So we're going to grab my Wasbomb Blaster Jet here. Oops. I'm just going to wash this wing here, and we do it, and it just works exactly like a normal wash. Every sense of the word. And when I do my planes like this, is that um, I streak it from front to back. You can see there's a little bit of beading here, so this might be another good reason to have the uh, varnish on there. You notice this is black. This is, what is it, lamp black? There's a couple different blacks. Ivory black. So there's lamp black and ivory black. I don't know if there's a difference. I'm not a watercolor artist. So I couldn't tell you the difference. 
They also had a Payne's Gray, which I almost bought. This Payne's Gray is a very interesting color for weathering and washing. So you can see, you can put it on just like your new oil. And again, you have to be careful. There might be a chance where it will soften up the paint and start to loosen it off the model. So that's why doing a varnish prior to the wash is probably not a bad idea. And on the Tamiya colors on the bottom here, I got Tamiya paint. This stuff is kind of like a satin finish and the paint, uh, the watercolor just kind of beads off it. There's nothing I can do to make the uh, make this wash stick to the Tamiya color. So either I'll have to varnish it before I do it or I'll have to just use That's way too much. That paper towel here. I'm gonna get a little pigment off the brush here. Add some more water to it. Actually kind of use it right off the model as the palette. By adding more water from the brush itself. So yeah, I'm taking off all that extra. All the extra pigment we got on there, we're just taking it right off with the brush itself. And of course I got black and I got burnt umber, which will be your um, Agress Earth Shade equivalent. Okay, so that's the idea here. So yeah, we just treat it exactly like a normal wash in every way. So there we go, kind of again, streaking the color back from front to back. Okay. So, now what? Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And we come over here to the, now this thing's already been washed with this stuff. Except for right here, I, had to, I put some new oil on there because I forgot I was gonna use this model for this video. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is clean off this brush, get, get the pigment off the brush, which these things clean up really easily, by the way. These watercolor brushes. Maybe just because they're even when I use the acrylics on it. Okay. Okay, so what we do, let's actually let's try Q-tip. And you'll see what I mean about it. Just kind of being able to control the wash. So we get Q-tip wet here. And we'll just kind of start to rub it off. And you can see it just comes right off. It's just the tiniest bit of water. So if you get too much wash on there, or you want to try and, you know, um, scale the wash in different areas, say a little less black here on the yellow. I'm going to streak it just a little bit more, just a little bit of water, and it'll take the wash right off. That allows you to control exactly how much pigment you have on the model. So I'm going to use a little, leave a little bit more around the, um, the orc symbol here, but then take more off the top, restoring the yellow. And you can see the modulation of the wash around here where, where it got. Now I got less, and I can just keep going and actually get all of this off if I really wanted to keep going on this. I could actually remove all the wash and restore, and virtually restore the original Evil Sun Scarlet underneath. So there we go. You can definitely see how we got a lot more variation in the in the washes. And, and the coloration there than we had before, including the cotton from the Q-tip getting stuck on that rivet. So, and so I think having these various, let's see here, let's see how well this looks. Let me get light on it. You can definitely see 
streaking a little better. You can see there's more shade around the pillars here. And overall, it just completely changed the look. And there's a lot of ways, there are a lot of things you can do with this kind of color modulation with the washes. Um, or I said, you can control the amount of wash, get less staining on it, on areas, so you don't have to do quite as much uh, color restoration or layering on top of it. And yeah, that looks pretty darn good, that wing does. Yes, I think so. I definitely think so. So that's it, and I guess we could try just a touch of the burnt umber. Anywhere that I want to wash the yeah, let's put this on the... Uh, it's going to be hard to see on the camera, but it is uh, virtually identical to the aggressor shade. It's very nice, very nice indeed. Okay. So again, you can go over this, and if you want to on something like this where you just go through it and just get all the shade out of off this model and just leave it only in the recesses and I so said something that, that people do with the oil color washes all the time but being able to do it with a lot less um, risk to the model because you're using um, water to do the modulation not the, not um, lacquer thinner so you have a much better, uh, much less risk of damaging the under underlying paint, even with a varnish. Because lacquer thinner will take just about everything off. Um, yeah, that looks great. See how it gets all in the resources, just like the oil washes would. And very easy to remove, very easy to stain. If you just want to stain the colors and control it that way. So yeah, this turn, video turned out to be a lot shorter than I, what, and I thought it would be, but this is these are great. And of course, the price. Think about the price. This tube was again they were five bucks. These were five bucks a tube, or ten if you go to the high quality, highest quality one they had at Michaels. Um, and I guess really the only difference in quality is going to be amount and the, the grind of the pigment. So in theory, the higher quality ones will have a much finer pigment than the cheap ones so i don't know if there's any extra difference between this and the windsor newton ten dollar tubes uh as far as that goes as far as something that would affect what we do because the finer the pigment probably the better off you're going to be and of course with this because it is very fragile you have to varnish after this that's a very, another key point so you have to varnish on top of this otherwise just handling the model will wipe off the wash onto your fingers because there's moisture in your hand on your skin, of course, and that will soften up the wash. So again, a varnish is an absolute necessity. But again, so the price is is right. I mean, one of one of these is less than a big bottle of uh, GW wash, and you could actually just mix these up into a wash, just water and some of this stuff, put it in a pot, and just use that as your wash, all by itself. You might want to add to like a. I don't know how this would work for if you'd want to add something to that, like a drop of soap to break up the surface tension or not. But um, I think it worked pretty well getting into the resources here. So I don't know if that's going to be a necessity. Yeah, so even if you wanted to, well, this is dried off again, you could just take your hands and just kind of like wipe, wipe this stuff off if you really wanted to have a different, even a different look. So you can use these exactly like oil paints. All the tricks that are done with oil paints and models, you can do with the watercolors. But you don't have to wait the week for it to dry and they're even easier to pull back off the model so that's all i gotta say about watercolor watercolor washes what do you think about this um if it's something you want to try let me know if it's something if you've used oil washes i would definitely recommend trying the watercolor washes too or in addition to that as a different tool for your toolbox um, but I'm extremely happy with how these things are coming out and how easy it is to clean up the model 
and uh, modulate the colors and add that streaking effect uh, way easier than it would be with the acrylic washes and a lot less time than it would be for the oil washes. So yeah, watercolor washes are probably going to become a major part of my hobby going forward. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.